All right, we are live on my account. You see it? Okay. And uh, we're having to improvise just a bit. <laughs> see if you got volume. Make sure we got audio. Um, because I've got that. Okay, great. Excellent. Anyway, uh, sorry for the impromptu uh, live stream here for Expedition Church of the Triad, but uh, we have had a few technical issues, and we're going to work our way through these, so just bear with us. Um, if you got your Bibles, <laughs> go ahead and turn to Ephesians chapter 4, and we'll get at least where we can start. Start, start. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, uh, before we do, though, let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this opportunity we have to come and receive from your word. We thank you, Father, that the Holy Spirit is the teacher of the church, and we draw on his teaching anointing and unction to share the word of God tonight and cover some things that we trust will minister to the people, minister to the people out there on the internet as well. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll delay receiving the offering until the end of the service and just keep it fairly short and sweet tonight. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4 is the chapter where uh, Paul writes to the church at Ephesus and discusses the ministry gifts. We're going to talk about that very briefly, but that's not the main topic. Um, I had a, an interesting time this afternoon in prayer, and the Lord dealt with me that the word for the night is gratefulness. And uh, I am grateful for a, a great many things. But gratefulness is... I actually thought I was going to teach on gratefulness, and that's not what I'm going to teach on. But that's the word for the night. That's what he said. The word for the night is gratefulness. I said, okay. <laughs> so we're going to approach this from that perspective and from that attitude. And really, if you had to put title of this, it would be growing up spiritually. But maybe from a direction that we haven't talked about before, we haven't shared about before. Uh, so I'm just believing for the Lord to do whatever he's going to do. So we're going to go in there. But it, in terms of gratefulness, I was thinking about a lot of things this afternoon, about things I'm grateful for. And we're sitting in one of them, this building. And, you know, I know, don't get me wrong, I know that the church is not the building. I heard that growing up Southern Baptist. You know, the church is not the building, it's the people. Well, praise the Lord, I understand that. But if you are the people and you don't have a place to meet, it's not a lot of fun. <laughs> and we've had years of being itinerant. And, you know, I can, I've, I've been an itinerant Bible minister. I've traveled and taught and ministered around the southeast uh, and, and into Jamaica and all, all kinds of other places. But, uh, you know, as an itinerant minister, you walk in, you preach, you leave. But when you're a church, it's hard to be itinerant and be a church. You need a place to call home, and we got a place. And I was thinking about it this afternoon. I am so grateful for that. You know, I, I, we spent, Blood and I spent a lot of leisure hours driving around looking for buildings. And we'd drive and we'd spot one and we'd call pastor and say, what do you think of that? And he'd go, yeah, I know about that one. And it's got this, that, or the other reason that we don't want to use it. And I said, okay. So we'd find another one. I'd call pastor. He says, yeah, I know about that one. <laughs> and it happened every time. I don't think maybe there was one or two times that I shared a building with him that he didn't know about. And usually it was buildings that he wasn't interested in anyway. So I said, well, praise the Lord. But I was out there trying, you know, put, put the, the rubber on the road and, and look and find, try to find a building. So it was on my mind a lot. And I find myself now, because of all these years of looking, I'll drive down, I'll see a building, I'll think, ooh, that's a good church building. And I thought, but we don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> we have a home, <laughs> you know. 
And so I'm grateful for that. I appreciate that. And we all know the story of the miracle that God literally performed to get us into this building and the finances and all the good things that happened. And I'm grateful for all those things. And uh, I was thinking another thing this afternoon. I am so grateful to have a wife that is a godly woman, that has godly wisdom, and tries her best to keep me straight. <laughs> and, you know, it's a job that is somewhat impossible. So, I, you know, we'll cut her some <laughs> slack on that. But uh, she'll just come out with ideas and nuggets and things, and I'll go, yeah. That's right. That's what we need to do. So I appreciate that. I, I am grateful for that. And, and that great, grateful attitude is really for the gifts that we have in our life. And people are gifts. People are gifts. And that is what we see here in Ephesians chapter 4. So let's look at... I want to back up. I started to start at verse 10, but I'm going to pull a pastor here and just keep backing up and backing up. Verse 8, Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, talking about Jesus, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now again, remember, we're talking about gifts in the sense of being grateful for these gifts. So keep that up most in your mind. Now that he ascended, that is, into heaven, what is it also that he descended first into the lower parts of the earth? In other words, as pastor was preaching Sunday, he went to hell and paid that price. So we didn't have to, praise the Lord. So he descended first before he went to heaven into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. And when he went to heaven, before he left, he gave some apostles. And he lists the fivefold ministry here. Some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. And I think it's interesting that he phrases it the way he does. He gave some, some means not all. So not all people in the body of Christ are going to be called into one of these areas. It's going to be some. Some implies a few, or at least a smaller number than the whole large number, right? So he gave some apostles, some prophets. So see, pro apostles... Prophets, they stand alone to a certain extent. Evangelists and some pastors and teachers. And I have yet to see a pastor who didn't also have a teaching ability. Now, they may not be primarily called as a teacher. Pastor Ed, I think, probably would say that although he is apt or able to teach, that may not be his primary calling. He is, first of all, a pastor. We've heard him tell the story, how the Lord told him, you are a pastor. And he was surprised because he thought he was going to be a prophet and teacher, <laughs> as everybody was leaving Rhema at that time. Uh, and I fancied myself that for a while. It was just in vogue to call yourself a prophet and a teacher. And, you know, the Lord dealt with me, you're not a prophet. And I said, yes, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> he said, I've called you as a teacher. You teach the Word. That's what you do. And helps ministry, which is not listed as a five-fold ministry, but it is an anointed ministry to be in the helps ministry, to help ministries and pastors. And I said, praise the Lord, I'm, I'm happy with that. I, I, I'm comfortable with that calling. And so, but pastors, I believe, are also able or can stand in that gift of the teacher because a pastor has to teach the local church. He has to minister to the local church. But the thing is, he gave these as gifts, these people. And the pastor has pointed out, you know, everybody is out to make a name for themselves, it seems, in ministry. The ministry of Dr. So-and-so, you know. And they puff and puff and they puff it all up and everything and they have books and tapes. And my day it was tapes, not anymore, but, you know, uh, audio products, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it, it's it's something that will grab you and almost take hold of you to constantly be selling, constantly be, you know, developing product 
Uh, I spoke with a, a minister recently who shall remain unnamed. Uh, I help a lot of ministers, and, and this guy is not from North Carolina, but I help him with a lot of different things. I do his website and so forth. And he called me and says, uh, Dr. Bill, what would you charge for Bible teaching? And I said, well, brother, you're asking the wrong guy. I don't charge for any of my teaching. Never have. Uh, I take that back. I, back in the early, early, early 80s, I had some tape series for sale because everybody was selling tape series. And I had them in folders, and I sold a few. So I won't say I never did it. But I quickly stopped because it just wasn't me. I didn't, it just wasn't clicking for me to sell teaching. I'm so determined to get the word out and so determined to preach the word of God to as many people as possible. I don't want to put any barriers in the way. I don't want somebody to say, well, I'd have got that series, but I just don't have any money on me. You know, here, brother, take it. You know, <laughs> that's just me. That's my heart. And so I told this guy, I said, you know, I, I'm not saying it's wrong. Don't get me wrong. You can do what you want to do. But I'm not the one to ask about what to charge. I just don't know. I've never thought about it. I just haven't put any thought into it. So he came up with a figure. He said, what do you think about that? I said, that's fine, whatever you want to do. And he's wanting me to set up his website where he can sell teaching through it, uh, audio sessions. And that's fine. Again, nothing wrong with that. Brother Copeland has done it. Others have done it. Brother Hagen does it. Uh, so that's all fine. But God gave these gifts to the body of Christ as gifts. And as a teacher, I feel that I'm a gift to the body of Christ. I, I, you know, the Word of God says not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. I don't think of myself highly like, oh, yes, Brother Bill, he's... God's man of faith and power to North Carolina. You know, I just don't look at it that way. You know, I'm, I'm happy to be in the woodwork, <laughs> to be in the background and do what's necessary to help the church and help other ministers and help Word of Faith Radio and, and put on Speak Faith TV and all the things I'm involved in and not have any limelight. And so that's just me. That's just where, where my heart is. But as I was studying this and thinking about this, it really struck me that because these are gifts, we ought to be grateful to the Lord for the gifts that He's placed in our life. Mm -hmm. And like Pastor Ed, you know, he, is, he has given so much through his life and dedicated so much time and so much effort and so much energy into building this church and helping us. I mean, when I was in the hospital, there was Pastor Ed, you know. Uh, I would have an issue, be able to go to him. He's right there. You know, he's always there. He's he's there as my pastor. And I value that just, just to a great degree. I, I am grateful for him as a gift. I receive him as a gift from God. Same thing with, with Brother Kenneth Copeland. I'm a partner with his ministry. I have listened to his teaching since the early 1970s when he first was getting started. That's a long, long, long time to have that affiliation. And so I count him as a gift. I receive his ministry and the Victory Channel and Revival Capital World and his books and uh, all the teaching that has come out of his ministry. I receive that as gifts to me personally. And part of what I want to share tonight is we need to take some time just to be grateful for what God's done for us. You know, like I say, the, the ministry, the building, Pastor Ed, other ministers. We got Shekinah Glory coming. Man, I receive them as gifts. I love to hear them minister and sing and, and how they just flow in the gifts of the Spirit and flow in the music. And, you know, you can tell it's not a practiced performance, it's ministry. And so I received that as, as a gift. And as I was studying all this, let's keep reading here. Why did he give these gifts to the body of Christ? He did it for the perfecting of the saints. And a lot of times we'll read that word perfecting and we'll go, oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not perfect. Well, he's not talking about that kind of perfecting. The King James says that. But really, the best way to say what the Greek says here is the completing 
you know, take something that wasn't whole and make it whole. Uh, one way to look at it for us, really, to understand it best is probably the maturing of the saints. We're to mature. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. Perfecting the saints for, for the saints to do the work of the ministry. And Pastor has been talking about that a few times recently. How we're to receive and receive here at church and then go out and minister. Now, we may not get on a street corner and preach and hold our Bibles, and, but just day-to-day, day-to-day interaction, talking to people. We can say that one word, share that one thought that maybe is going to help somebody. That's ministry. And in that case, you become a gift to them. So you are the gift that God is using to minister to them. And we've got the promise that we've been given these gifts, these ministry gifts, to develop us, to mature us, to the point that we can do that kind of work of the ministry. For the edifying, the word edify here is like the word edifice. The word edifice comes from this same Greek word. It means like a building. And, you know, if you were to go out to the car and your battery was running low and you hit the you know, starter and it goes, you know, uh uh-oh, I need to charge this battery. I need to build up my battery. Well, that's the way this word reads. Building up of the body of Christ. Charging us up. So when we come to church, we get charged up. When we hear ministry preached, we get charged up. It enables us then to go out and minister. And how long is this for? We see what it is for. How long is it for? Until we all, every member of the body of Christ, comes in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect or mature man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Wow. Wow. I don't know about you, but I hadn't arrived yet. (laughs) I am not to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. I have not yet arrived. Don't have any inkling that I have. Don't get me wrong. But I do believe I am more mature now than I was. Back in the day. (laughs) Pastor Ed talks about back when I was on radio and I would preach up a storm. And then the guy would come on after me and he'd preach against everything I said. And then I'd get up the next day and I'd preach against everything he said. (laughs) That's not profitable. It's not very wise. You know, I felt like it was my duty to get out there and correct this guy. No, it's not. (laughs) You know, and that was immature. And he's used that actually as an example. Thanks, Pastor. (laughs) Of of immaturity. And I I own it. (laughs) Yeah, you're right. That's a long time ago, uh, back in the 70s and, and early, early 80s. So, uh, okay, but here's the thing. There's been time between now and then, and I've had a chance to mature, and I don't get on and try to fuss at people and straighten them out. I'm amazed at the number of ministers, I'll put that in quotes, that are on Facebook that feel like it's their duty to straighten everybody out on their doctrine. Well, A Facebook post is not going to straighten out anybody's doctrine. I'm sorry. (laughs) It just isn't. It is not the authority you want to go to. You want to go to the Word of God, find out what it says, not a Facebook post. And if you're taking Facebook posts as authoritative, you got some problems with maturity. (laughs) Okay, let's keep reading. Henceforth we be no more children, verse 14. Well, children are immature. That's what he's getting at here. How do we know they're immature? How do we know they're children? They're tossed to and fro. They're carried about with every wind of doctrine. What's the latest doctrine? What's the the, the neat thing everybody's talking about now? Uh, I've known some people had that attitude. Are you up on the latest doctrine? Uh, You know, all my alarm bells start going off. Because if that's your goal, is to be the one that's got the latest, greatest doctrine, immaturity. It's a sign of immaturity. Let's keep reading. Uh, Verse 14, let's go back. 
and he, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men. There are people out, out there actually trying to deceive folk. And cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. There's folks that actually are planning on deceiving the body of Christ. Not all of them are Christians or have that label. A whole lot of folks in the political realm, a whole lot of folks in the philosophical realm want to deceive Christians outright or planning on it. So we need to be aware of these things. They lie in wait to deceive, but rather, what are we to do? Speak the truth in love. Speak the truth. Now, I said recently on my radio program, and I think maybe even on my video program, what is the truth? The truth, John, 10, uh, John 17, 17, I should say. John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The word of God is truth. So if you've got questions about what's true, there are a lot of people today that are arguing the philosophical veracity of how many genders there are. Well, if you really want to know how many genders there are, go to the Bible. Look at the verse of Scripture that says, Male and female created he them. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> There's two. So if you want to know how many genders, <laughs> the Bible tells us the truth. Anything else is, no, is not true. It's not Bible. It's not true. And a lot of people would say, well, yeah, Dr. Bill, you're just, you're just closed-minded. Well, I can afford to be closed-minded. I know the truth. <laughs> Amen? I mean, why argue about something? Why get into discussions even about something that I absolutely know the truth about? And see, there are people that say, well, you see, that's just closed-minded. I can afford to be closed-minded on that topic. Now, I'll be open-minded as to what the great, latest, greatest computer is to use. I need to study and find out and do comparisons of what's the latest, greatest computer. I'll give you that. And I need to be open-minded about that. Not just say, well, I'll only go with HP computers or I'll only go with Dell computers. I'll be open-minded on that front. But the Bible doesn't say anything about what's, which one is the better computer. If it did, I'd be able to go to the Bible and say, what's the best computer? <laughs> it's not there. So I can afford to be open-minded in that area. But if it's a topic covered by the Bible, it's a done deal. Amen. Okay? So, we know the truth, so we speak the truth in love. See, I don't have to beat anybody over the head. There's only two genders. You dummy. What good is that going to do? What I can say is, well, the Bible says he created them male and female. That's what I believe. I don't have to be mean about it. I don't have to be fussy about it. I don't have to get in any arguments about it. I just can tell them that's what I believe. Well, I don't believe that. Fine. That's between you and the Lord. You go to the Bible, you read it. You disagree with it. <laughs> I didn't write it. Let's get off my nose. But I am to speak the truth in love, and in doing so may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplied, according to the what? Effectual working in the measure of every part. That means all of us got to do our work, whatever God's called us to do, as a part. I've got my part, you've got your part. If you try to do my part, you might not be anointed to do that. You might not be graced to do that or have the unction to do that. Don't do it just because you want to do it. Do it because you do have the grace. Do it because you do have the gift. Do it because you do have the unction. And you'll be happy doing that. See, if I tried to be the great prophet... I'd fall on my face, and I wouldn't enjoy it. But I can be a Bible teacher, and I feel very comfortable doing that. Pastor says, Brother Bill, are you interested in in-season and out-season? Can you teach on Wednesday night? Absolutely, Pastor. No problem. I don't get upset. I don't get nervous. 
I just come in and teach. Because the anointing is what does the teaching. I don't have to sweat it. So the thing is, every joint supplies its part. The effectual working of the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. And that, that's interesting. That we, as part of the body of Christ, function to edify the body. The body edifies the body. Now, obviously, the Holy Ghost edifies the body. God the Father edifies the body. Jesus, as head of the church, gives us direction and edifies the body. All that's understood. We know that. What I find interesting is that the body edifies the body if we are working in the functions and the anointings and the unction that we have individually. And if we do our part, other folks get edified. Now earlier we read the, the verse that says, and be not children. I want you to think for just a moment about a child, an infant child. What can that infant do for itself? Not a lot. It's breathing. It's doing that. But it can't feed itself. It can't clean itself when it dirties its diaper. It can't provide anything. And here's the interesting thing about little babies, children, small children. They don't have a care in the world about other people. They would not look at you and because you changed their diaper say, Thanks, Dad, for changing my diaper. <laughs> they don't do that as an infant. They're just, <laughs> change my diaper, you know. <laughs> Somebody do it. They're, they can't. They are incapable. An infant Christian, even if they're 70 years old and gray beard and they just got born again last week, they're an infant Christian. Do we expect them to stand at an office of ministry? Do we expect them to, to minister out a part to the body of Christ at that point in time? No. Do I expect my baby to go out and get a job at one year old to support the family? No, of course not. I take care of them, feed them, burp them, clothe them, pay for everything. Change the diapers, do the whole nine yards. I've done it. <laughs> Amen. My baby is now about to turn 31 in August. <laughs> but, you know, he's past all that now. And, you know, he's a young man. So he's capable of a lot more. He works a job and pays for rent and takes care of himself. I didn't expect him to do that when he was one year old. Okay? So we have to understand everybody's at a different place. And God's not going to expect you to do at one year old, as spiritually speaking, what He expects of somebody that's been in the Word and studied the Word and been fed and developed and, and built up their muscles spiritually, been praying in the Holy Ghost for years and years and years. He expects more out of us. We've been at it longer. And so, yeah, He expects a lot out of us. But those young Christians, they're there for us to supply to. They're there for us to minister to them, help them, build them up. And I believe, and one of the reasons I think the Lord had me share some of this tonight, we're about to see growth. We're about to see new people come in. And a lot of them are going to just have been born again, or maybe they've backslidden, they've been away from the Lord for a long time, they need a chance to be planted and they need a chance to grow. And they need us to be understanding and loving and accepting of them as a person. Now, here's a key. I can accept somebody as a person and love them and not approve of their lifestyle. See, this is something a lot of Christians have forgotten when it comes to something like homosexuals or whatever, and we say, oh, we got to love the homosexual. Yes, you do. You have to love them. You don't have to approve of their lifestyle. You don't have to approve of their sin and rubber stamp it and say, that's fine, okay, 
come on into the church and, and, and be in our kids' area and help our kids. No, <laughs> you're not going to. Not in this church, I can guarantee it. <laughs> I've heard pastor. It ain't happening. And that's perfectly fine because we love the person. We want them to be here and hear the word. We want them to be developed and turn from their sin. That's what it's all about. Something I, I said recently, the Lord dealt with me about it. It's, it's amazing as a word of faith person and word of faith minister, you don't hear this very often, but we need to live uh, a life of repentance. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. If I make a mistake, I want to know what that mistake was. I want to ask forgiveness, and I want to correct it. See, that's what maturity does. Maturity doesn't say, well, I don't have any, I don't have any faults. Yes, you do. <laughs> I do. Got a lot of them. Ask my wife. <laughs> you know, she wouldn't, she wouldn't tell you. <laughs> but inside, she's going, yeah, you're right. <laughs> but the thing is, she loves me for me. And she overlooks those faults fault, fault for the most part. Uh, <laughs> she does give me wisdom about what to do about it. So that's good. Anyway, but the thing is, that's the way we ought to treat other young Christians. Realize that we have maturity. We're not mature yet. We, we haven't achieved the, the fullness of Christ level. <laughs> but we're more mature now than we were. I'm more mature than I was in 1979. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but even though i got a ways to go, the level that I have, I can share. The information I have, I can deliver. And I can supply that according to the effectual working of the measure God's given me. He hasn't given me the whole thing. He hasn't given me the whole picture. I don't even know everything I'm going to be doing even in my ministry yet. Every time something comes up, I go, ooh, that's neat. Thanks, Lord. Again, I'm grateful. He shows me something. I, I walk in it. Whoo, I get grateful. Amen. And it's the same thing with us all here. We're going to be called on to supply from our measure that we've been given. Dick supplies because he can play the guitar. I love that. I can't play the guitar. Not like that. <laughs> he writes songs. He shares all kinds of things. The anointing flows. Man, that's a tremendous contribution, tremendous ministry. He's supplying out of the measure that he has. Same thing with Nathan. Same thing with others. Everybody's got something that they're contributing to the whole, contributing to the ministry. And that's really what I wanted us to see tonight. Edifying itself, the body edifying itself in love. And that gratefulness and that love, whew, praise the Lord, that's what we need to operate in. Not beating people over the head, not getting rambunctious, not, you know, like I used to do back in the day, <laughs> but being calm and direct and mature. So that young baby, they can't take care of themselves, they can't contribute as much, but we love them, we care for them, we help them. I tell you, I loved holding Ben. In my arm, I would cradle him across my chest, and he was warm, and he'd lay there, and he'd snuggle in, and he'd go to sleep, and then I'd go to sleep <laughs> with him stretched across my chest. And that's the most comfortable, awesome feeling. I got such good rest, and I got to hold him close to me. I tre <laughs> oh, God, break up over this. I treasure those days. I love those days. And playing with him in the pool and having all kinds of fun. He's older now and he doesn't do that quite the same way. But I got my memories. <laughs> and we still have fun doing things. And I still enjoy going to a movie with him and talking about it and just stuff. Just fellowshipping. And that's the way we should be with fellow Christians. Just fellowshipping, just enjoying them and being grateful for the body of Christ. We've had, as you all know, certain things that have happened in the church to family. 
and their and their child and all of that is terrible but I guarantee you give it some time and that family will come and say praise God for the church praise God for the family of God that surrounded us with love and compassion and helped it's so much I'm not saying it's ever easy to go through stuff like that obviously but it's so much better to have the body of Christ lifting itself up in love, ministering to each other, helping each other, being understanding, being thoughtful. Now again, I talked about the fact that that little baby is not going to say, thanks, Dad, for doing that for me. They, they, did, they don't do that. But there comes a day, praise the Lord, there comes a day where that child will say, you know, I appreciate your example. I appreciate the life you lived before me. I appreciate what you've done for me. And I just want you to know that I'm grateful. I've had that happen, and I appreciate that. And there are times, he, you know, he may not say that as much, but you treasure the times that he has. And it's the same way with us, as we minister to others in the body of Christ and minister to those younger Christians. I'm grateful to have that opportunity. And I'm grateful to see the growth and the strength that develops in them so that they can minister to the body of Christ and build them up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, I said it wasn't going to be long. It's not. But I trust you got something out of that tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We'll receive our offering now. Those of you that are on the Internet, if you'd like to contribute to Expedition Church the Triad, you can do that through the Cash App at Dollar Expedition Church on the uh, Square Cash App, or you can uh, give through uh, PayPal to give at expeditiontriad.org. And those of you that are here tonight, if you'd like to receive from Brother Joe, we'll go ahead and pray and receive the offering. Father, thank you for this opportunity to, to share the Word of God tonight, to share fellowship together here tonight. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing here at Expedition Church, and we just believe that the funds, the, the gifts that are given tonight will go into the ministry and help and bless folks right here at Expedition Church of the Triad and through the church out to the community. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. All righty. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to go ahead and shut down the live feed here. So, folks, I trust you enjoyed that tonight. And uh, let's see if I can get to the right button. Got to use the right button. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time.